Lord, this morning. Father, we thank you for this day. God, we thank you for the opportunity that we have to be here together to worship you, the creator, God, the creator of all things, God. We declare that you are good. You're good not because of what you've done for us, but because of who you are. Good is your nature. And God, we thank you for who you are this morning. We thank you that you are the King of kings, that you are the Lord of lords. God, we're thankful that one day every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that you are Lord. And God, today we declare you Lord over this house. We declare you Lord over this time, Lord over this service, Lord over our worship, Lord over the word, God. We submit to your will and to your way. And we say, do what you want to do today. In Jesus' name, everybody shouted. Amen. Would you give the Lord a hand clap and shout of praise this morning?
blood still saves. That blood still heals. That blood still delivers this morning. It's never lost its power. Through the ages and through the centuries, it's still delivering and making the captive free. In your own words right now, thank Him for that blood. Without that blood, you wouldn't be here this morning. Without that blood, you wouldn't be forgiven this morning. Without that blood, you wouldn't be healed and made whole this morning. And it's that blood that will set your family free. It's that blood that will set your friends free this morning. Lord, we thank you for the blood this morning. Come on and lift your voice. We thank you for the blood this morning. We thank you that it's seated on that mercy seat, Lord. And it's crying out mercy on our behalf. I thank you that his blood speaks a better word over us, Father. Great are you, Lord. Hallelujah. We worship you this morning, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We ask everyone in the congregation to open your mouth and give God glory and praise in your own way in your own way. If it's just, thank you, Jesus, for the blood. Or if it's just, we give you glory, we give you honor and praise. Just open your mouth. He wants to hear your voice. He wants to hear your voice. Give him a thank you. If it's just, thank you, Lord. It doesn't have to be loud. It can be whispered because his ears can hear you. And Pastor been teaching us to pray in the Holy Ghost. And so those of you who are baptized in the Holy Spirit, just open your mouth from your spirit.
church. Yes, come on. Say it again. Come on. Great is the Lord. Great are you, Lord. Come on, say it one more time, church. Come on. Hallelujah. Great are you, Lord. When Paul was addressing the church in Corinth, the church that they had worked tirelessly to plant, a church that was birthed out of the first great revival movement after Jesus had ascended into heaven. When the Holy Spirit had poured himself out, Paul said this to the church in Corinth. He, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 2, he said, You know that when you were pagans, you were led astray by mute idols. You were led astray by mute idols. There's a lot of gods that are set up around the world. There's a lot of things that people call Lord. There are a lot of things people worship. But there is only one true living God. He is the Alpha, the Omega. He is the beginning and He is the end. He is God Almighty. His name is Yahweh. He is the creator of the heavens and the earth and everything in it belongs to Him. And one day, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord forever. There's a lot of things and a lot of idols and a lot of gods. But there's only one who speaks. He is not mute. He is not deaf. He knows the end from the beginning. And that's the God that we worship today. That's the God who can bring you victory today. He has never lost a battle. He has never been defeated. He is God Almighty. As we started the service, He is the King of Kings, and He is the Lord of Lords. My opinions, my perceptions, my ideas will never, ever trump the truth of who God is. Can somebody shout hallelujah? Father, today we declare that you are Lord of all. God, that you are Lord of us. That you are Lord of our thoughts and our ideas and our theologies. God, that you are Lord of our circumstance. That you are Lord of our struggles. That you are Lord of our impossibilities. You are Lord of our success. You are Lord of our failures. You are Lord of all. Today we declare that you are good. Today we declare that you are in control. Today we declare that you are Lord. In Jesus' name. Can you lift up a shout of praise to the King of Kings? Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Last night I went to, Pamela and I were blessed to be able to go to a concert. And people drove from all over. 7,000 people were there. It was an outside concert. It was pretty warm and very humid. 7,000 people drove to this place, packed in, paid $20 to park their cars, walked forever, had to be COVID tested before you went in. People went through a lot to get there. And it was a one, probably the best performance and show that I've ever seen in my life. 
And I was so excited to go. It was a concert that I'd wanted to see for decades, literally. And yet, I could not wait to get back to my church because there is nothing more exciting, more refreshing, and more fulfilling than worshiping God together with your church family. Can we give God one more hand clap of praise? Come on. Hallelujah. If you're here this morning and it's your first time to be with us, we want to welcome you. We believe you chose a great place to worship the Lord today. Uh, Before we go any further, I would like to dismiss Miss Pamela. And if you are first through fifth grade, you can go with Miss Pamela. She's got all kinds of stuff prepared for you today. It's going to be awesome. Would you give our kids and Miss Pamela a hand as they head out this morning? But if you're a guest here, we want to welcome you. Uh, Unity Church family uh, would love to welcome you this morning. And we're thankful that you chose to worship with us. If you have tithes and offerings this morning, you can drop that in the basket in the back on your way out uh, by these doors to my right. And uh, if you want to give electronically, we have a way for you to do that. And that'll be on your screen for the next few moments as well. You can scan the QR code with your phone's camera, and that'll allow you to give to the Lord your tithes and offerings. Uh, That way, once again, we want to thank you for your faithfulness in giving Unity Church. Uh, You just really blow us away. Uh, Kids, teenagers, adults, you guys blow us away with your faithfulness to God and your giving. And uh, we're just able to do all kinds of awesome things uh, because of that for our community and around the world. Uh, Also, I would like to uh, just thank Mikey and Jasmine for leading worship today. Was that not anointed and awesome? And I don't know if you've noticed, but Mikey has a little bit of pep in his step because we're just a couple of weeks away, boy from welcoming Miss Ivy into the world. And we've got Miss Tracy and Miss Zadi here with us. Can you give them a hand this morning? Jasmine's parents, welcome. And uh, thank you for being here this morning. Mikey, I just keep having to kind of put a hand on his shoulder because he keeps just trying to float off. He's just so excited. Jasmine's got a little more weight, you know, just kind of holding her down a little bit. And so, uh, But I want to brag on Jasmine. She's been playing drums every Sunday night over in youth and just getting after it and uh, leading worship. Man, she has not slowed down a bit. And so uh, I'll tell you what, little Ivy uh, has been um, literally baptized into worship and the presence of the Lord uh, as a baby in the womb, right? And so uh, no telling what God has in store for that little girl. Can somebody say amen? And so uh, I'm going to go ahead and transition into the Word this morning. Uh, We started a series last week entitled Masks. And uh, man, that was a powerful time uh, last week where we were reminded of who we are in Jesus. Somebody say, I'm chosen by God. Somebody say, I'm loved by God. Man, he loves you so much. And I feel like that's just for somebody this morning. Somebody's here this morning, and maybe you've had a rough week. Maybe you've made some bad choices in your life. Maybe you feel like God's abandoned you because of your circumstances that you're walking through this morning. But I want every person under the sound of my voice, whether you're sitting in the sanctuary or you're watching virtually, We're on TV. You are loved by God Almighty, creator of the universe. The Bible says that he measures the span of the universe from the tip of his thumb to the tip of his pinky, the span of his hand, the universe. He spoke the universe into being. He spoke creation, everything that we see and enjoy in creation. He spoke that into being. And yet, he knows the number of hairs on your head. Not one of them fall off without him knowing. Now, I kept him busy for a few years, as some of you have as well. But God Almighty loves you so much 
that he is attentive to every detail in your life. Somebody say, I'm loved by God. And so we started this series called Mask, and we're going to pray here in a second. But before we do, I want to read a couple of scriptures to you this morning. In 2 Corinthians 5.17, it says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, somebody say, I'm in Christ. He is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. The New Living Translation says this means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone and a new life has begun. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you that it's alive and well. God, we thank you that you loved us enough to to give us your written word. God, we thank you that, God, your written word speaks life and truth to us today. God, that there's power in your word. God, I pray that your word will speak to our hearts and change our lives today. In the name of Jesus, everyone said, amen. Would you give this band a hand this morning? Such a blessing. Emma was back there just beating the mess out of those drums this morning. Wasn't she doing an awesome job? Man, that was that was just awesome. Thank you, Emma. Uh, Daniel and Amy and Jasmine, man, you guys just know how to play. Um, mask. And so last week we talked about the identity crisis. And I used a, a blank, basically faceless and expressionless mask last week to illustrate this, because sometimes this is how we walk through life. We don't really know who we are. We we have all these ideas and perceptions, and we wake up in the morning, and the Bible says this, that a man who doubts is like someone who walks in front of a mirror, looks at himself, can y'all hear me still? Looks at himself, walks away, and forgets what he looks like. And sometimes I think that we walk through life like this. We forget who we are. We come to church and we're reminded that we are more than conquerors. Somebody say amen. That we're the head and the not the tail and that we are above and not beneath. We're the lender, not the borrower. And we remind ourselves that we're kings and queens in God's sight. We're reminded of those things on Sunday. But because of all the things that the world has to offer that we're feeding on as well, we walk away and we begin to doubt that we are who God says we are. Well, I'm not good enough. Well, I haven't made enough good decisions, or whatever, you know. And, and we began to doubt because we began to believe that we're who the world says we are. But somebody shout, I am who God says I am. And so God does not want us to walk around with an identity crisis. He wants us to know for sure, without a doubt, that we belong to him and that he loves us, that he is more than enough, and he is our daddy God. We are his children. We are blood-bought like we sang earlier, right? The blood of Jesus still works. Can somebody say amen? And so God does not want us to walk around with an identity crisis. He wants us to know who we are in him. Somebody be reminded, you are in Christ. Push on somebody and say, you're in Christ. All right, now look, I've had a few cups of coffee this morning. I'm ready to go. I don't know if y'all are ready to go. Push on somebody and say, you better wake up. You're in Christ. Lord, have mercy. I thought you'd be excited about that. I said, you're in Christ. You are in him. He is the I am that I am. The God of the universe, and you are clothed in him. You are clothed in Christ. You may have failures, disappointments, frustrations. You may have shortcomings. You may have weaknesses. But the Bible says that it is in your weakness that he becomes strong. Why? Because you're clothed. You're like Iron Man, right? In the suit, right? Man, I love how that suit just 
it just wraps up around him. That's how you are in Christ. As a person, you're just a person. But when you're in Christ, buddy, you better watch out. And the devil doesn't have a chance. That's why the devil wants to keep you as far away from Christ as he can. Because he realizes that if you walk around with an identity crisis, not knowing who you are, then you don't have a chance. But the moment that you realize, I'm not just Tony Stark, I'm Iron Man. I'm not just Travis, I am in Christ. And the same power that rose Jesus from the grave, from the dead, is living inside of me. Then no matter what I face, I realize that I am more than enough when I am in Christ. Somebody shout hallelujah. I'm preaching better than you're shouting this morning, I can tell you that. The identity crisis... We are masked by what we are marked by, and we're defined by what we identify as. Am I going to identify as a failure? Am I going to identify as someone who's not, who doesn't have it together? Some, the old me, am I going to identify as the me for, that I was as a teenager? Am I going to identify as the me as I was before Christ? Or am I going to identify as a blood-bought child of God? I do not like the song. I like the song. I don't like the line from At the Cross that says, uh, what is it? Such a worm as I. Is that right? I don't like that because I may have been a worm, but I'm not a worm any longer. I'm a priest king. The only time I resemble a worm is whenever I began to identify as the worm that I used to be. Mm. Pinch somebody and say, that's good. Don't twist, just pinch. You don't need that, you know, just, just a little pinch. People are marked by some of these things we talked about last week. Experiences, hurts, failure, success, relationships, circumstances, culture, career, education, climate, disappointments, and disagreements. But what we want to realize and remember is that we are brand spanking new. All of that stuff is in our past. Even if it was from yesterday, that is in your past. Even if it was this morning, that is in your past. Somebody shout, I'm brand spanking new. And so today we're going to talk about the next mask, and that is the mask of fear. Yeah. The mask of fear. Yeah, that doesn't look too good, does it? The mask of fear. And, you know, like, ah, right? I don't know how to, I don't know how to do that, really. Um. Uh, we don't watch scary movies or anything, so I don't know how that works. But my wife gets extreme pleasure from sneaking up on me and just going, huh. <laughs> all right? And then I go, huh. <laughs> you know, and, and she loves that, and uh, she, she gets entertainment out of that, right? And uh, she's always loved to do that. And um, to startle me or whatever, she enjoys that. The mask of fear. Somebody say, I am not masked with fear. When you are masked with fear, you begin to see things that God has placed before you from a distorted point of view. You don't want to live with the mask of fear. And you may say, Pastor, this message is not for me. I'm not that guy. I'm not the guy that, uh, you know, walks around scared all the time. Well, we'll see. 2 Timothy 1.7 says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity. 
you may not have a problem with being afraid. You may not have a problem with, uh, you know, walking around the house thinking the boogeyman's behind you or something like that. I don't know. Maybe you do. Not not the boogeyman, but, you know, the err. So I always thought the boogeyman, man, that's got to be horrible. I mean, what does he do? Like, ha, 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 you know. Or maybe that's where all the crusty stuff comes from under my seat in the truck. You know what I'm saying? I was wondering where that came from. That's what I, that's what I tell Pamela. Hey, the boogeyman was here. I don't know. I'm just kidding. <laughs> that's, that's nasty, isn't it? I'm glad she's not in here. She would be <laughs> she'd be mad. It's better than diarrhea jokes, which I usually tell, so okay. What was I saying? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I got you. 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 That's it. For God has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity. You may not be afraid of the boogeyman, but but are you timid? Or do you walk around feeling like you don't have something to offer? Do you walk around intimidated by the people that you're around? Do you walk around, uh, you know, do you go to work feeling like everyone else is better than you? Are you timid? Are you afraid to speak up? Are you afraid to speak out because you feel like you don't have something to offer? I'm telling you that God did not give you a spirit of fear. He did not want you to be timid, but he gave you power, love, and self-discipline. But I can tell you that we fear or we are timid because we do not know who we are in Christ. Just like we talked about last week. If we realize that we are clothed in Christ, then we would not walk around fearful. We would not walk around timid because I can guarantee you that we can be like Paul who said, look, even when he was about to approach a very scary circumstance, a very scary, and and it's like, what am I going to say? Well, I'll tell you what I'm going to say. The Holy Spirit's going to give me the words to say. Because he understood that he was in Christ, that the Holy Spirit was living inside of him. And so even though I may not have something to offer, the Holy Spirit always has something to offer. And so whether you are the person that walks around afraid, afraid of the dark, afraid of monsters or whatever because you've allowed a door to open in your life by watching scary movies, which I don't recommend. Or if you are the, the person that is scared of, of having a wreck all the time or scared of sicknesses or diseases or scared of COVID or scared of whatever, you're walking around fearful all the time of something that might happen. Listen, whatever that is, if you realized who you are in Christ, you would not walk around fearful all the time. You would realize that I have a God that I am clothed in who owns the cattle on a thousand hills. It doesn't matter. You may be fearful of the economy. You may be fearful of the government. But I am not a citizen of the cosmos of this world. I'm a citizen of the kingdom of God. I am clothed with the king of kings. I'm clothed. Think about it. I'm clothed with the king of kings. And so I'm not going to be fearful of the economy because he's got plenty of money. I'm not going to be fearful of sickness and disease because it it was his blood that makes us whole. And I'm clothed in him. Oh, man, somebody ought to get excited. I'm telling you, I'll, I'll preach as hard as you Agree. Come on now. We are fearful because we don't know who we are in Christ. Consider this. It will help you. Gideon. Gideon came from the weakest family. And can I say this? Not just the weakest family. He's like, look, you know, when the angel of the Lord, remember, Gideon is the guy that's going to lead the Israelites into victory over the Midianite army. Uh, it says that the Midianite army looked like locusts on the ground. I mean, just so many of them, thousands and thousands of Midianite troops. They have been oppressing Israel for years. They have, they have forced them into 
uh, a place where they they are having to be very careful of of the grains and things that they get because the Midianites would just come and take it. And they're going to take the best of everything that Israel has to offer and the things that they've worked hard for. And Gideon is here, and the angel of the Lord, they come to a point to where they're desperate, Israel's desperate, and they begin to cry out to God. They begin to repent from their sins, and they cry out to God for a deliverer. And the angel of the Lord comes to one of the most unlikely people, Gideon. And... He says, hey, mighty man of valor. And Gideon's like, and and he tells Gideon, you're going to lead the Israelites to victory. He's like, "Uh, I think you uh, got the wrong address, bud. Because my family is the least and the weakest of all the families of Israel, all the tribes of Israel. You're going to come to talk to me? And not only that. I'm the least of my family. And so you pick the tribe on the bottom, and I'm at the bottom of that tribe. (laughs) That's pretty bad. I mean, and so Gideon came from the weakest family, yet God called him a mighty warrior. And so you may not be equipped. You may not be uh, equipped to, to do what God has called you to do, but when you are clothed in Christ, you are equipped to do whatever he says you can do. And so God saw something in Gideon that Gideon did not see for himself. And so you may see a weakling, you may see a failure, but God sees a mighty warrior. Gideon spoke out of fear, yet God used his praise, listen to this, to win the victory. He's like, oh, no, it can't be me. It can't be me. And we see this throughout Gideon's uh, story. He, he, he just speaks out of fear all the time. But yet it was the sound of Gideon's voice and the army that he was leading. All they did was lift up their voice for the sword of the Lord and Gideon. And, and they began to praise. And, and we see right before the battle was won, Gideon fell down to his knees and worshiped God with his voice. And he began to proclaim the goodness of God and that God had given them victory. And God defeated the Midianites through their praise, through lifting up their voice, through obedience. So God spoke in fear, but God used that same voice, that same praise. That same insignificant being in his eyes to win the victory. Gideon was a hoarder. It said that he was in the bottom of a wine press and, and, and threshing wheat. And, and, and he was hoarding that to keep what they had safe from the Midianites. And he was bringing it all in close. And, 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 and he was af- so afraid that the Midianites might come take the little that they had left. And yet God made him a deliverer of the Israelites. We live in uncertain times right now. I paid $3.06 for gas this week. And... I passed a station yesterday that was three dollars and seventeen cents a gallon, and and you know when things like that began to happen, and we hear about all these crates, you know, off the coast and all this stuff, and you know, uh, as I've been hearing about all that stuff, I'm reminded we don't serve a materialistic God anyway. Oh, but what if I can't get what I want for Christmas? Oh, boo-hoo. It's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. I don't like it. I don't like it. And it's, you know, our economy is is a little crazy. The world we live, how many of you would just agree with me? Come on, it doesn't matter. It's just, the world's a little crazy. A lot crazy. If you, don't, if you don't believe so, look at the person next to you, and then you're going to agree with me. The world's a little crazy. It's a little crazy, and we're not excluded. We're a little, we can be a little crazy too, right? 
But God has not fell off the throne. And I'm not going to get in panic mode and start hoarding what I have. Uh, What I've learned in times of uncertainty and fear in my life, in times where things don't look exactly the way that they need to look for me and my family, you know what we do? We start giving more. Let's, Let's, and and I'm not just even talking about to the church. It's just whatever God leads us to do. Man, we just start, we just start giving more. You know why? Because, because the Bible's still true, and the more I give, the more that God's going to give back a good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. That principle, that principle, that is not just a promise, that is a principle, right? That principle does not change because the economy changes. And so we have had some of our most prosperous times in some of the hardest of times. The church's income went up during COVID, not down, right? And we saw that all over, all over the world. We saw that people, listen, that God can bless his people. And, and I love this, that he gets even more glory because when things should be going down, they're going up. When things should be getting harder, they're getting easier. When things, listen, I'm telling you that God has not fell off the throne. And so God took a, a, a hoarder and made him a deliverer. And then Gideon was a doubter, yet God saw him as a man of great faith. A man of great faith. Gideon, Gideon's like this. Angel of the Lord comes to Gideon. Already, if the angel of the Lord came to me, I would be like, okay, something's up, right? Uh, I, I don't know how, I just don't know how much questioning I would be doing if obviously the angel of the Lord came to talk to me. But maybe, maybe, and and so then, you know, the angel tells Gideon, he's he's like, man, you're you're gonna you're you're a mighty man of valor, and you're gonna you're gonna lead the Israelites to to victory. You're gonna be the deliverer, and 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 I'm gonna do great things, and and everything, and and then and then the angel goes away, and Gideon says, okay, okay, um, Lord, before we really get started. If you don't mind, I'm, I'm just going to make sure that this is real. And he takes a fleece, which this is not a fleece, but he takes a fleece. And he goes back to the place where the angel found him. So as he goes back down to the threshing floor, right, the bottom. And, and he lays it down. Okay, I hope I get this right. We're going to. Somebody help me. I think, I think he said, if the f- fleece is wet in the morning, but the ground is dry, and I may have this backwards, okay? If the fleece is wet and the ground is dry, then I'll know that it's you. So the dew can fall and, 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 and everything, but, but if the fleece is wet and the ground is dry, then I'll know that this is you. Like, that's easier than knowing that an angel, have you read about the angels in the Bible? Man, these guys are big, intimidating, obvious. Uh, Look, this is, okay, he's been standing in front of you talking, but this is going to be a little easier for Gideon, okay? If this, if, if it's really you, God, because I still have all these insecurities and fears, I just need to know for sure that it's you. And I'm not judging Gideon. I may have been the same way. I don't know. And, and so it happened, right? And and somebody help me, is this is this backwards? Okay, right. The fleece is wet, the ground is dry. He wakes up in the morning. It happened. The fleece is soaking wet, and he gets up and and he rings it out. And I, I'm just paraphrasing here. He rings it out. And he's like, Oh God, I, I can just see it. God, you're good, and and oh, this is awesome. This is this is so good. Uh man, oh, what is God about to do? And I think that we have those moments in our life, and this is what it's like when we come to church. Oh, God, you're really real, and, and you really are capable to do whatever whatever you, I, I, I'm sorry for doubting you, and I'm sorry for, and, and, and we're wringing our fleece out, and it's just so good, and, and we get so excited, and we're throwing our hands up, and we're saying, way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper. Oh, and we're worshiping God, and we're saying, it's your breath in my lungs, and, and all of this stuff, and we're so excited about God, and then we go 
home, we're like, okay, wait, 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 wait. I forgot about all those failures I had yesterday and, and how weak I really am and how, how, how and we have all this doubt and, and fear come into, come into play and we say, okay, God, I just, I just need to be reminded one more time. Hold on. I'm going to lay the fleece back down. And, and God, if you'll just, if this time, if you'll, if you'll just let the fleece be dry and the ground will be wet, then this time I'll know and I'll believe that it's you. And I'll believe your word and I'll, I'll be convinced. Why? Because even though Gideon wanted to have faith that he was who God said he was, he still had so much fear. He was seeing things through the mask of fear. And, and he was so used to this being who he was and being fearful and afraid and intimidated and insignificant and, and all of these things. And the least of the least, he was so used to this mask in his life that he could not take it off. And so he woke up the next morning and he walked out, splash. Oh, I believe the ground was wet. I believe it was nice and wet. And he bent down and he picked up the fleece and he felt it. And it was dry. Dry as a bone. Because when God does something, he does it all the way. The sucker was dry. And he said, oh, God, I know it's you now. I know it's you. I, I, I'm ready to go. And, and, and he prepares his army. And, and he gets everybody together. And, boy, he gets everybody he can because he knows he's going to need he's going to need a crowd to fight an army that looks like locusts covering the earth. Oh, Jesus. I believe this word is for somebody I'm going to read scripture. I wasn't planning on reading this. But in worship, I felt, I felt led to just go ahead and go to the scripture. In Judges chapter 7, the Lord took this vast army and he whittles it down to 300 men. He said, get in. You got too many. This is not about you. It's not about the size of your army. This is about the true and living God. The people cried out for a deliverer. And one thing that we need to be reminded of is I'm not he. He's he. He's I am. We're clothed, but we need to remember it's all about him. You got too many. If the army's too big, who gets the glory? The army gets the glory. Right? And so this is not this is not the dialogue that they have, but we need to be reminded that it is not the size of your army, it is not the size of your capabilities and your qualities, it is not how good you are at something or how talented you are at something. It is about who God is. And so, anyways, he gets down and it's time to go fight the Midian, the Midianites. It says that same night, the army is gathered around them in the valley, and, and they're preparing to make war with the Israelites. It says that same night, the Lord said to him, Arise, go down against the camp. He's got 300 men. Go down against the camp, for I have given it into your hand. And then I... Love this next line because it shows the compassion of God. It says, but if you're afraid to go down there, even though I just told you, I've confirmed it by the angel of the Lord. I've confirmed it with a fleece, and I've confirmed it with a fleece again, and I've told you, and, and, but if you still don't believe me, and if you're still afraid, if you were afraid to go down to the camp with Pura, your servant, go down there. And you shall hear what they say. And afterward, your hands shall be strengthened to go down against the camp. Then he went down to Pura, and his servant, this is not on the screen, I'm just reading to you, okay? His servant, with his servant, to the outpost of the armed men who were in the camp. And the Midianites and the Amalekites and all the people of the east. Folks, that's a lot of people. Lay along the valley like locusts in abundance. 
And their camels were without number, as the sand on the seashore in abundance. And when Gideon came, behold, a man was telling a dream to his comrade. And he said, Behold, I dreamed a dream, and behold, a cake of barley bread tumbled into the camp of Midian and came to the tent and struck it so hard that it fell and turned it upside down so that the tent lay flat. Now, a loaf of bread just knocked over one of the army's tents in the dream. And his comrade, I believe without hesitation, answered and said, Well, this is no other than the sword of Gideon, the son of Joash, a man of Israel. God has given into his hand Midian and all the camp. As soon as Gideon heard the telling of the dream and its interpretation, he worshiped and he returned to the camp of Israel and said, Arise, for the Lord has given the host of Midian into your hands. Listen, can I tell you this, that the enemy already knows that he is lost. Can I be reminded, The enemy, can I remind you this morning, that the enemy knows the end of the book just like you do. The enemy knows that he is defeated. The enemy knows that if you realize who you are and who is on your side, that he is lost. Sometimes God's just waiting on us to catch up. If I can just get them past their fear. If you're still afraid. Listen, I believe that God, (laughs) God is telling you sometimes, if you'll just go to church, pastor will remind you. You'll hear something that's going to empower you and equip you. But can I tell you on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, if you'll just open up the Bible and begin to read, you will be reminded. You'll hear something. You will see something that will empower you to be reminded that you are more than a conqueror. But when we neglect to hear and to see what God says and, 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 and listen, and we began to sink into our fear, then we began to become overwhelmed by the fear that we're masked with. Look at somebody and say, you need to be reminded. I'm going to hop through this next portion, rooted in fear. These are things that are rooted in fear. Like I said, you may not be walking around scared of the devil or monsters or whatever or scared of the dark, but these are things that are rooted in fear. Number one, doubt. Do you struggle with doubt? How about this? Confusion. Well, that's a big one. But God is not the author of confusion. Can I say that again? God is not the author of confusion. So if you're struggling with doubt or confusion, or distrust, or hesitation. Oh, man, I wish I could just spend a I would lose you, though. Worry. Are you worried all the time? Anxiety. Rejection. Terror. Apprehension. Depression. All of these things medically, scientifically, you don't even have to take these things that I'm saying by faith. This is proven. These things are rooted in fear, and they're triggered by something that we're afraid of. Here's symptoms of fear. And you may just want to take a snapshot. If you're, if you're sitting there, just feel free to take a snapshot of these because I'm going to go through them fast. Symptoms of fear, sleeplessness. That's a big problem in our society. Shallow breathing. Heart issues. Dry mouth. Suicidal thoughts, paralyzed. And I'll just stop right there. I believe Gideon was paralyzed because of his fear. I want to go attack him, but... uh, and hesitation that we talked about a while ago. Oh, man, if I just had more time, I'd preach on that. Eating disorders, broken relationships, and loneliness. 
All of these things are scientific symptoms of fear. How many knows that God wants you to take off that mask of fear? He doesn't want you to live like that. He doesn't want you to live afraid. So here is the answer. I'm not here to just talk about the problem this morning. I want to leave you with the answer. You, the only way, the only way for you to overcome these things is to counteract fear with faith. Faith is... You've heard me say it over and over again. Faith is not the absence of fear. Faith is being willing to trust God even when you're afraid. Just because there are some ounces of fear out there, some what you see is a fearful thing or a fearful circumstance or a fearful uh, you know, thing that God has called you to, whatever it is. And, and it may be big and it may be overwhelming and it may look like it's going to overpower you, but it's being willing to say, God, it doesn't matter what's standing in my way. It doesn't matter what's out there. It may look scary to me, but I'm going to trust you and I'm going to do everything that God has called me to do regardless of fear. I always say that fear, I mean, faith is not the absence of fear. It's being willing to walk forward regardless in faith. The way you overcome fear is by counteracting it with faith. Joshua 1.9. Here Joshua is. Moses has, has died, and Joshua is getting ready to lead the Israelites into the promised land. They've already crossed over, and and now they have Jericho and all of this in front of them. And the angel of the Lord appears to Joshua and says, I have commanded you, be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened, and do not be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. I believe that sometimes we need to be reminded that God is with us wherever we go. How do I know? Because I'm clothed in Christ. And so no matter where I go, your work circumstances right now may be fearful. We live in a crazy world. Your school circumstances may be fearful. It may feel like you're the only one living for Jesus. But can I be remind you that you are clothed in Christ. And so whether it's work, school, home, wherever you go, God is with you. God is with you. Ms. Verna did her banquet last weekend and all week long. It was things that just, I believe, popping up just to see if she would Back down. Cancel it. Everything from people preparing food to to decorators and just problem after problem after problem after problem. And and it was, I really believe that the enemy operates like that and he will build a Jericho just to intimidate you. But the Lord is saying to you today, no matter what you're facing, no matter what you're going through, did you think that the enemy was going to make it easy on you? No, we serve serve a real God and we have a real devil that's fighting against us. And so we need to be reminded the Lord God is with you wherever we go. Here is what is rooted in faith. Take a snapshot and we'll move fast. Belief. Certainty. I'm certain. That's what God's wanting to birth in you. I'm certain that he is God. I don't doubt. I know he is God. Trust, confidence. God is wanting to restore your confidence today. Assurance, loyalty, acceptance, hope. Hope is such a powerful word. It's so small and so big. Reliance, sureness. Here's symptoms of faith. I love this. That's the emotions that are rooted in in, in faith. Here's the symptoms of faith. You have a sound mind. Would you agree with me that the world, what the world really needs today is a sound mind? It's like where on, on all sides, the whole spectrum, come on somebody. It's like what happened to the sound mind?
symptoms of faith, sound mind, relaxed, just relaxed, relaxed, not uptight. I think it's time for the Christians to quit walking around looking like you're about to have diarrhea all the time because you're so uptight. Like you're, I don't know what's going to happen, Pastor. I just, oh, did you see the news? No, because I don't watch the news. Why don't you watch the news? Don't you need to know what's going on in the world? I'm not a citizen of the world. I look at headlines to where I can stay stay a little bit up to date, but I don't click on those articles, buddy, because once you start clicking on articles, I can feel my faith just go. You can feed yourself off the reality of the world, or you can feed yourself off the reality of who he is, who God is. Somebody shout hallelujah. Look at somebody and just say, relax. Healthy. God wants us to be healthy. Joyful. Joyful. Joyful, 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 joyful. Like Miss Annette. I can be having a bad day. Ha, 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 pastor. <laughs> Peaceful. I love that when people come here, they... The, most of our guests don't say, oh, pastor, the message was so good. They don't say the music was, oh, the music is just the best in town, even though it is. I really believe that. This morning was just amazing. But they walk out, and they don't come back because of the message or the music. They come back because they feel peace. They feel love. They feel joy. And they feel just peace, peaceful. I think the world needs that. Productive. God wants you to be productive. If you're paralyzed in fear, you're not being productive. But if you're moving forward in faith, God says that he will cause you to produce much fruit. Stable. Friendliness. Hopeful and confident. These are symptoms of faith. So we got to counteract fear with faith. And lastly this morning, if the worship team will begin to play... We're going to counteract fear with love. We're going to counteract fear with faith. I'm going to walk forward regardless of fear. And we're going to counteract fear with love. 1 John 4, 18 says, there is no fear. Somebody say no fear. In love. But perfect love drives out or casts out fear. When I'm walking in perfect love... When I'm walking in the love of Jesus Christ, all fear has to go because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 7 says this about love. Love is patient and love is kind. It does not envy and it does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered, and it keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, and always perseveres. If you will allow God's love to wrap around you like a cloak today, if you allow God's love to just just begin to just overwhelm you, I want to be overwhelmed with the love of God, then the mask of fear will fall off and you will begin to see yourself as God sees you as loved. Who, listen, as a loved child of God, and if Cecilia is God's daughter, then how much, listen, don't you think that God's going to take care of his daughter? I've got two daughters. I would do anything to protect them. I would do anything to keep them safe and to keep them healthy and strong. Listen, I make them eat their green beans and their broccoli because I want them to be healthy. Not because I'm a mean daddy. 
I want them to be healthy and I want them to be strong and I want them to I want them to listen to live as an overcomer. I want them to go farther than I've went. That's why Jesus, if we really realize who we are and that we are loved, we will be reminded that we will do even greater things than he. Why? Because a good listen, because a good father sent his son to do greater things. And the son looks at us and he says, hey, I want you to go even farther than I went. We are loved. We are his bride. And he wants good things for us. Can somebody say amen? Would you stand this morning? If we can love ourselves as Christ loved us. And we can love others the way Christ loves others. Then listen, all the fear, all that stuff just fades away. It fades away. It fades away. And we begin to see ourselves as who Christ says we are. We're going to end the same way today as we did last week because I believe it's important. We're going to do this for the next few weeks. If you're here this morning, you say, I do not know Jesus. But today, man, I'm just, I'm ready today. I'm ready to give it all to him. I'm tired of living on my own. I'm tired of being my own Lord. I'm tired of calling the shots for my life. I'm ready to give it to Jesus. And I'm ready to see myself as he sees me. Then I want you to raise your hand right now. If that's you and you say, man, I just need to give my heart to Jesus right now. Come on, don't leave this place. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. Would you just say this prayer with me? Say, dear Jesus, thank you for loving me enough to die on the cross for my sins. Today, I give my heart to you. I give my life to you. Help me to see myself as you see me. Today, I ask you to be my Lord, my Savior, and my best friend. I give it all to you. In Jesus' name, Amen. Would you give God praise for that today? Come on. He is so good. He's so good. He's so good. He's so good. He's so good. Now, I want us to all be reminded today that that is a starting place. God has so much more in store for you today. God has so much more in store for you. Listen, I want us to all repeat this next slide. All we're doing is reminding ourselves of who God says we are. Pastor Shane, you can get ready to come. It says... I am chosen, I am adopted, I am loved, I am anointed, I am appointed, I am righteous, I am bought, I am sanctified, I am justified, I'm more than a conqueror, I'm a friend of God, I am his workmanship, I am valuable, I am set apart. I'm the head, not the tail. I'm above, not beneath. I am victorious. And I am who he says I am. In Jesus' name. Come on, give him praise this morning. All right. Thanks for choosing to be here with us this morning. And in God's love. There's all of those joyful things, okay? Remember, though, we still have to live it out. We're all those things. We're confident, but we have to choose to be confident. We're more than a conqueror. We have to remember, walk in conquering. It's all, it helps us in our mind. It comes from our heart. We live it out every day. He is there for us, okay? And then He helps us along the way. We get a little discipline. He encourages us along, okay? All of that's in His love all in his love um, with that remember Wednesday nights we got our men's women's youth college um, uh, kids services here at 630 the guys are going to have a little outside event on Wednesday night so would encourage you to take advantage of that and, and join us uh, the women are, are also and for the youth and college kids uh, after we get through this month they're preparing a whole new kind of place for y'all. Uh, we're putting in new uh, seating and uh, it's painted and it's going to have just a cool hangout place for y'all on Wednesday nights uh, at 6.30. So 
uh, that's all getting prepared as we're going through this month. So just look forward to those things. And uh, may God bless you as you go this week.